Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to say something. You might think I'm not polite. You can fall in love with Jesus all you want, but if you don't have the Holy Ghost to lead you into obedience, your love is not going to be manifested. Oh, I love the Lord. Oh, I just love Jesus. Oh, I just love Jesus. Well, what did the Holy Ghost tell you? What do you mean, Holy Ghost? Come on. And if you don't develop a relationship with the Holy Ghost, you're going to have to develop a relationship with religious people. Amen. Choose. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, reading that in English, you would think that meant go into all the world, snatch up everybody and throw them in some water and say, Be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Right? If you read that in English. And that's why churches fight now. Oh, you got to be baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, you got to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember. I didn't bring it. The, the literal translation says this. Starting at verse 19. It says, go therefore, teach all nations, baptize them into the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost. He said, baptize them into the name, the reputation of the Father. The name, the reputation of the Holy Ghost. The name, the reputation of the Son. See, baptize them into God. Amen. Immerse them in God. Yes. Don't go finding water, looking around, you know, getting people all fixated with liquid. <laughs> Baptize them into the character of God the Father. Yeah. Baptize them into the character of God the Holy Ghost. And baptize them into the character of God the Son. Amen. Amen. But when you read it in the, in, in the King James or the English translation, it makes you think, okay, we got to go baptize them in water. Paul said, I don't baptize none of y'all. Jesus didn't baptize any of them. It was a baptism unto repentance, and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not trying to change your theology. But if you don't get the understanding that we need to be into God, come on, we need to be into him. Not going to church, bringing the church to the church building. I'm so into God that when I come to the church building, God comes. Amen. 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 The Bible says we are a habitation of God. Where at? In the pneuma, in the spirit. We're not a habitation of God in this building. Yes. Truth be told, if I do a survey, 15 of y'all don't like the other 15. Y'all not getting along in the natural. Please, as many of y'all, some of y'all got money and the, and the person right next to you is dead broke. You're not getting along. But in the pneuma, you would see who has needs. And some, of you, and some of you are deceptives. No, no, you know, Matt, you ever seen um, Transformers? We got a new Transformers in the church, Decepticons. Come on. You got believers that still lie. You know, we got to get to a place where we realize, okay, I have to be in the pneuma. Because if I'm in the pneuma, I can't swim. I can't swim in water, but I can swim in God. I know how to flow with God. I know how to flow with the people of God. And when people are not right with God, I, I, I shriek up. Because I know there's a cross current and somebody's going down. Come on, help me. So what happens is this. We got to get to a place where we realize if I'm going to be led by the Spirit of God, I'm going to have to flow in the fruit. It ain't about tongues. It ain't about miracles. Come on. It ain't about signs and wonders. The Bible said even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. There's false, there's false miracles. But you, you know, and even now, I'm going to be honest with you, there's even false fruit. You got people that can act like they're kind, but put them under a test. You want to know, know the greatest tests in every church that I've found out 
is the pastor. Oh, yeah. The pastor that you get to know. Not the hiding pastor that stays behind the pulpit and look all glamorous and untouchable. Those guys can't challenge you because you really be like, oh, yeah. venerable, oh, <laughs> Mr. Great, I can't touch it. But let a pastor talk to you. Let a pastor make a mistake in front of you. Oh, we'll see where your kindness is. He ought to know better than that. Oh, when your little, when you were dying and caught up in your blood, you know, come on. But let a man or a woman of God make one mistake in front of you. You think, all right, let's get rid of him. That's your father talking. See, because Satan's been trying to get rid of him from day one. But the moment you see a mistake, you want to say exactly what Satan said. It's time for that pastor to go. <laughs> well, I ain't making no mistakes, but. But what happens is we get to a place where the pastor treats you like you're human. And you don't like that. You like them to treat you like you're the child of God, incapable of mistakes. <laughs> and what happens is it challenges you because now Satan says, someone's looking at them in the natural, I can now attack. Oh, Satan waited for Jesus to make some mistakes. At least he thought he did. And what was his mistake? He hired Judas. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to talk to you about the Holy Ghost a little bit. He had Judas, which was a thief. Then he had Peter, which was full of pride. The Bible says this. The Bible said, Jesus said, Satan wanted you first. I'm paraphrasing. I'm doing a pastor's paraphrase. He told Peter. He said, Satan desired you, man. See? But I prayed for you. So he went after Judas. But there was a scripture on Judas that he was going to go down. Come on, help me. You better find out from the Holy Ghost where you're gonna land, where you're gonna end up. Amen. Listen to me. Peter Judas could have repented the right way. Because the Bible says he repented in himself. He was sorry, but he didn't have the sorrow that led to repentance. He could have cried out to God, and God wouldn't have said, oh, the scriptures say you got to go to hell, man. Oh, the scriptures. No. God would have told him, okay, no problem. I'll find another one. Ain't no problem. I wrote the book. Come on. Why did you say that? You remember that, the prophet? The prophet went to um, Hezekiah, the king, and said, get your house in order. You're going to die. The prophet walked out the door. Hezekiah turned to the wall, told God, you know, I've been doing some good stuff for you. Before that prophet got outside, he said, go back and tell him again in 15 years. God doesn't change his heart, but he can change his mind according to a situation. He's God. He can do whatever he wants. He said, I'm God. I change not. See, you can change your decision. Some of you think you're going to be broke the rest of your life. But he said, oh, no, I'm going to teach you how to prosper, you know. Say, come on, help me. So you see, he said, baptizing them into. And then because why would, why, would, why would you think that was water when the next thing says teaching them? See, baptize them into teaching them to observe all things. Because when you get into the Father, you get direction on what to observe. When you get the Holy Ghost, you get direction on what to observe. When you get Jesus, you get direction on what to observe. I, I like what it says. Um, let me come back to that. Go to John. I'm getting, too, I'm getting ahead of myself. Go to John chapter 1, verse 25. See, when we, when we get into the Holy Ghost, when we get into Jesus, we begin to realize there's a lot more that I'm responsible for. John 1, 25. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not the Christ, that Christ, nor Elias, nor, neither that prophet? John answered 
answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is who cometh, coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoelaces I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Beth Beth the Barber. Wow, Beth the Bar. Is that like, all right, that's a new bar. We got Barbara, now we got Befa Bar. Well, I never saw that. Beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing, the next day John see of Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God will take it away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not. See, this is the key. Even though John was Jesus' cousin, they were cousins. Yes, yes. He didn't know him. Yes. And see, this is this is why it's important to get the Holy Ghost, because when you have the Holy Ghost, nobody will know you unless they have the Holy Ghost. Anybody have siblings? You know you're all acting like. Come on. Because your spirit is the same. You know, your blood is the same. Your parents were the same. You know, so that caused the simil similitude in behavior. When you have the Holy Ghost, you could be in the church with people that, that do everything you do, but something happens, and somehow they could not make the transition. It was a time to worship, and they needed the book. <laughs> Whereas you needed a place to lift your hands. They couldn't make the transition because there was no pneuma in them. Come on, help me. But the danger with that is we get critical. Yes, yes. Uh, we don't see it as a handicap. Yes. We think we're better than them yes. because they don't know how to get in the pneuma. Yes. Come on. But look what it says, verse 31, verse 32. And John bear record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, this is important, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Amen. Now, John, you know, this is, uh, who's, who's, this is John the Baptist talking, right? So, the Apostle Paul is nowhere around. So the witness agreed. Paul says, if you don't have the spirit of Christ, you're none of his. God told John, when you see the Holy Ghost coming down and staying on somebody, that's my son. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine a testimony like that? If you see the, the Holy Ghost, that person's related to me. Amen. 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 Come on, say only three of y'all getting excited. Amen. That's your testimony. Amen. Amen. If they see the Holy Ghost, Amen. then they know you are a child of God. Amen. Amen. Not, come on, let me see this thing. You talk. Not your no. Oh, thanks. Not your Bible. Not your forty ounce gold chain around your neck. Come on. Not your purple collar because you were bishop. <laughs> you know what I found out about purple? The Romans, they created the purple. Only an emperor was allowed to wear purple. And if anybody else had on purple, they would kill him. Yeah. Come on. Think about it. And here we are. You know, we're worried about the external religion. You know, but we're supposed to be able to see the Holy Ghost. Amen. So when we're acting in the flesh, we can't make people acclimate and call us children of God. Amen. You are what you produce. Yes. I didn't know you was a child of God. I just saw you doing some stupid stuff. Yes. I thought you was a stupider. <laughs> Come on. See, he didn't know. God told him, whoever you see the Holy Ghost come upon and stay on, that's my son. Come on, how many of you jump in and out of the Holy Ghost? Oh, I love Jesus. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Praise the Lord. Shut up, shut up. You, you go in and out. 
This this ought not be. You need to get in and stay in. You don't pass the test. Excuse me, I gotta go smack somebody. And now it's on. You gonna make me lose my salvation? No, you ain't got one. When something is precious, you ain't gonna lose it. Go to Acts chapter 1 verse 4. And the only reason why I'm talking about baptism is because we need to get into the Holy Ghost. Somebody said I need to get in the Holy Ghost. We need to get to a place where holy living is nice. Being right is good. Come on. I see I, I you know I went to the you know beach with these people. We actually was on a boat. They jumped in the water. Everybody on the boat jumped in the water but me. And the people who said, come on, jump in. It's really, really shallow. And I said, nah. Because I, I value my life. And I can't breathe underwater. And I didn't know if they were all tricking me on then, you know, on float and acting like it was, you know, come on. So I didn't jump in. And then I started sweating. Getting hot. And they left and I jumped in and the thing was only three feet. You better jump in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Time is running out. You don't, your calling is in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Your destiny is in the Holy Ghost. Amen. No matter what you accomplish in this world, it's all going to be burnt up. Amen. Acts 1-4. And being, and being assembled together, you there? Amen. With them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, the whole, can I, can I, I'm going to help three of y'all that that's, that's can understand English. The whole, not, when I say the whole, I'm not trying to act like I'm, a, I'm, I'm giving you a a, a complete dogmatic statement, but I'm just going to use this as a term. The whole Bible is based on a promise fulfilled. It was a promise. He told, he promised the devil, the seed of the woman going to crush your head. It was a promise right in the beginning. And now, Jesus now shows up. We find out from Galatians that he is the promised seed right but then he begins to he dies so we realize if he was the promised seed why would he die then we find out it wasn't him it was what came on him it was the Holy Ghost come on the promise that God made was that people would receive the Holy Ghost Yes. Good oh, thank you. I'm glad you're back. I'm going to say this until you'll get it. The whole accumulation of this book is the Holy Ghost. Jesus opens up the door for the Holy Ghost. He creates the world. He's the one touching everybody throughout all history. Jesus comes so that he can die so that the Holy Ghost can come on the people God promised him to. Jesus said to the disciples, I'm going away and I know you're sad, but the comforter, who is the Holy Ghost? See? Now, we look at the Holy Ghost and we look at the comforter. See, he's only going to comfort you when you're sad. But when you have the Holy Ghost, it's hard to stay sad. Because the Holy Ghost is the joy of God. He's the love of God. He's the peace of God. So if you have the Holy Ghost, comfort is not always going to be needed. Because you're going to be bringing comfort. Yes. Amen. Because you have the Holy Ghost. But he said the comfort is coming. He used that term because they needed comfort at that time. Yes. He said the comfort, don't worry, when I go away, the comforter is coming. 
Yo, and, he, and Jesus said he's going to come in my name. Yes. Yes. Come on. He's not going to break up the family plan. Yes. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to minister to the Holy Ghost. You know, I'm going to ignore Jesus right now. You're going to ignore Jesus right now. Well, everything is done to the glory of God in the name of Jesus. That's why religions can't receive the Holy Ghost. You have to come by the way of the name of Jesus. Now, the name of Jesus is not just a phrase. It's the reputation of God. Now, how many people have ever been to this church more than six weeks? Right? How many have ever been challenged by me? How many have ever been treated nice by me? Right? A couple of things I have done. Some people put their head down when I said the word challenge. <laughs> and I don't mind. So when my name comes up, some of them have all kind of... <laughs> they process in all kind of things. <laughs> them are filled with Pastor Rich. Come on. I've given them so much to be challenged by. Where is he? What's Pastor Rich? <laughs> Others that don't know me, I don't care Pastor Rich here. But them that know me in different areas, when my name is mentioned, it just fills them up. When we experience Jesus in all aspects of our life, when you hear that name, if you're sick, you get healed. If you're alone, you get comfort. If you're afraid, you get peace. Come on. It's to the degree he is allowed to influence every area of your life. When you hear that name, it begins to change things. But some of us don't. We don't. We don't spend time with him. We go to church, and you know. But no, 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 no. Where am I? Ready? Verse five. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come 